You're watching Hot Work Academy. My name is Ming Jin Tong. So excited to share today our recipe for a whole fish. So this is a braised red snapper. In Chinese, we call this hong sao, which means a red braised, and you'll see why we call it that. So thanks for tuning in, and let's cook. <music> Okay, so for our whole uh, braised red snapper, these are the ingredients we're gonna have. Of course, we're gonna start with this beautiful red snapper. When you pick a fish, make sure the eye is clear. That's one way to know that it's still fresh. When that eye gets a little bit cloudy, you might wanna pass on that one. Um, this is about a two pound fish. Really excited for this one today. Um, for our aromatics, we've got scallions, We've got fresh garlic as well as one little knob of ginger root. And in the wok, what we're gonna be putting in is some of this sugar. Now this is called brown candy, that's the name of the package. You can really use any kind of a sugar. Traditionally, we would use something like this or a rock sugar that you can find at a local Asian store. Of course, salt, just for some saltiness. And we're gonna start with vegetable oil in the wok as well as this is Kikoman soy sauce, a rich, dark, and nutty soy sauce for the flavoring. And then probably the most important ingredient here, this in Chinese we call mi jiu tou. So this is actually a high alcohol content rice wine. Still salty, still a rice wine, not a wine vinegar, but a wine. And this will help to what we call in Chinese qu xing, get rid of some of that fishy smell uh, or the raw taste in the fish, okay? So get your ingredients, and what we wanna do is let's go ahead and prep some of these things. You've seen me do this so many times, but this is very easy. Uh, we're gonna get rid of these stems, and we just wanna cut the scallion kind of into large pieces, and we're gonna add that in to our uh, braise a little bit later. So we'll set that off to the side. Nice big pieces so we can remove them off the fish. Um, pretty easily. Same thing for the, uh, the ginger root. We want nice thick slices because these are gonna go into the hot oil um, early on and we want that to be ready as well. So we'll set this over here. And then for our garlic, again, you just wanna peel it. You just want a few pieces. These are gonna go into the braise. Let me just get these smashed and ready to go. And I'm not too concerned about peeling off that woody end uh, because these aromatics are used mainly for flavoring, not really for the eating. Um, of course, you're welcome to eat it, but um, we're just gonna use it to flavor the fish. So once you got your uh, garlic all done, just a little bit of uh, attention to the fish. I wanna show you just a few things here. So here's our garlic. The garlic is gonna go in uh, not with the ginger root, but the same time as the scallion, so I'll put that in my scallion bowl. Now, for your fish, this red snapper uh, I purchased already cleaned. Most Asian grocery stores, if you go in and buy a whole fish, they will actually clean it for you for a re relatively low price, which means they've taken out all of the intestines and the gills, removed the gills, and they've also scraped all of the scales off, which is why it, it looks like this, right? A, uh, scales on a fish make it look a lot brighter. And when the scales are removed, you get down to the skin. And we are gonna be preparing this fish whole. And we're actually gonna be eating uh, all the meat, the meat that's uh, here in the head on either side of the main uh, ridge of the skull. I love to eat the eyes. That was my childhood favorite, still a favorite of mine. So we're gonna do a whole fish. You might wonder, do I need to remove um, the fin on top, you don't need to take that off. And one of the very best parts that we all fight over at the table is the tail. You don't need to do anything to the tail. You can leave it just like this. And even these fins here on the side, you can just leave them right on. And when it's cooked, you can break that off. This will be super crunchy and nice to eat. Um, you can eat the whole fin. And of course that meat that's attached there will be delicious. So. Let's go on over to the stove and let's cook this up. Okay, once you've got all your ingredients set, you wanna come 
and we're gonna use a round bottom wok and I've removed actually the wok grate so that my wok can sit nice and level inside. I'm gonna go ahead and do a high heat and what I wanna do is start with vegetable oil. So I'm gonna do about one circle, maybe two circles here of vegetable oil and this is what's gonna happen. We are gonna introduce our ginger root, which has these nice thick slices, right into the hot oil. And we are going to pre-cook the ginger root before we put the fish in. Now, my mom used to say, we put ginger root and we slide it into the pan, just like this. And the reason we do that is because the ginger root helps the fish not to stick to the pan. I don't know if that's, Totally true, so sorry, Ma. <laughs> Anyways, let's still follow the same procedure. So I'm gonna turn the heat down just a little bit to get that just to a medium. And this is what I wanna do. I do know that the ginger root flavors the oil really well. So we are gonna do that. And because my wok is nicely seasoned, the fish will not stick to the wok because of that as well. So let's get that ginger root fried up here and it's got a great smell. Unlike garlic, ginger root will not burn in the hot oil, uh, not nearly as easily. So you can let that go for a little bit. And I want, again, my oil to be flavored with the ginger root before I put my fish in, okay? So let's, that, let's let that go for just a few more seconds here. Get a good amount of oil. We're gonna use, um, we're, we're using the oil as a part of the dish because it's going to be frying the bottom. So in a minute, we're gonna slide that fish into the wok. Now imagine, if it's not a perfect contact fit, what's gonna happen is that oil is gonna act as the conductor for the heat between the pan and the fish. So we need to have to, wanna make sure we have enough oil for that purpose, okay? So looks it looks really good, in fact, I've got that much oil there. I might want to add just a little bit more to make sure I've got good conduction between my pan and my fish. All right, so here we go. What we're gonna do, make sure your fish is not dripping because it might kind of splash on you. You're gonna grab the tail and what you're gonna do is you're gonna let it go into the wok and we're gonna slide it right in. As soon as it stops, that skin is going to stick. So let's go ahead and let it sit just like that, okay? We're just gonna let it sit. Let's go ahead and turn that to only a medium heat. We don't wanna touch it at this point. What's gonna happen is that the fish skin right now is sticking to the wok. If you touch it, the fish is gonna move and that skin is gonna be stuck on your pot. That's no good to anyone. However, if you leave it, what's gonna happen is that the skin will release itself from the wok and will stick back to the fish. And then when we flip that fish, we're gonna have a nicely browned, nicely, um, see, uh, nicely coated uh, fish, okay? One thing you can do, I talked about conduction. I don't hear the right sizzle, so I'm gonna turn it up a little bit to get more heat. I can tilt my wok and watch what happens when I tilt it. When I tilt my wok, I'm bringing that hot oil to the tail of the fish, which further allows it to cook. Now you might say, hey, what about your tail here is sticking out of the wok? That's totally fine. We'll worry about that in a little bit. And let's tilt it this way. Same thing. You can see the fish head is not making perfect contact with the wok. That's okay the oil is doing the work for us, all right? So let's let that cook a little bit here. And I wanna keep tilting it to let the oil touch every part of that fish. The fire seems a little high, I'll turn that down. Just a touch. I'm gonna move that ginger root. Let that ginger root continue to be in that oil. Let's move it again, again to cook the bottom half of the fish. A braise is both a fry 
and a cooking in liquid. So when we braise the whole fish, we wanna make sure we give adequate time to develop the fried flavors of the fish. And that's what we're doing. We're not touching it, we're not being rushed, we're just being patient, and we're gonna let that fish skin fry all the way through um, before we move it. All right, let's do it again. Let's move it just a little bit. Patience is important. Control your heat and control your urge to, to uh, make a change. I'm turning that heat down just a little bit more here. In the meantime, let's go ahead and melt the sugar. We talked about using this brown candy bar. What we'll do is very easily just break it in half and let's put that into our pot and let's add a little bit of water to that. I'm gonna put that over heat to let that melt. All right. Now, one way you can tell that the fish is starting to be uh, cooked is that I'm not hearing a lot of sizzling anymore. That means there's no more water on the surface of the fish. Hopefully that means the fish has begun to release. Let's do a small test. Going from the head of the fish, which is the most sturdy part, I'm gonna just give it a small pull, okay. It does not feel like it's released yet. Let's see if I can get it to, to move a little bit. I don't wanna break the skin, but I do want to see if it's fried enough. Okay, so my fish is fully released in the pan, which means the skin is no longer stuck to the wok. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna move, make room, and this is how we're gonna roll it. You can imagine we're gonna move the fish by rolling it over on its back. The fish is essentially like this, right? The top is solid, but the bottom is open. If you try to flip it along the bottom, it doesn't quite work so well as if you flip it from the spine area. Because it's nice and solid, it will flip right over. So the way we'll do it is we'll get our walk under this way, or our scooper under this way, and we're gonna roll it along its spine to the other side. I do wanna add a little bit of oil to make sure that it's going to come off or, or not hit the pan too, um, that it doesn't stick too much, okay? So let's go ahead and flip it over and let's see how it looks. All right, that is looking just fantastic. So if you see here, we've got a nice fried skin. None of the skin was removed from the fish. Actually, I totally lied, look at this a little bit of the skin from the tail has come off onto the, onto the pan. And that's because the contact was not adequate. But you can see all of this skin stayed intact to the fish, and that means it had adequate time to fry, okay? So from here, let's go ahead and turn the fire back up, and we're gonna continue to let that fried flavor develop um, by letting the fish continue to sit in that oil and continue to cook. Some of these garlic pieces look a little bit spent, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove them. Sometimes garlic, or excuse me, some of these ginger pieces, sometimes ginger can really begin to develop an off flavor if you leave it in your uh, cook too long. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove it knowing that the flavor of the ginger root is already in my oil, I'm not too concerned about it. Okay, at this stage, you really are only gonna have one side of the fish that's gonna look kind of presentable. And that's the side that we started on. So, do I need to make sure that the bottom is fried just as well? You really don't need to. This is a one turn method. We're not turning it again after that. So. What that means is we can begin to season our fish, okay? So what we'll do, we'll start with some salt. Make sure you get all over head to tail. We'll do a little bit of white pepper. Some red chili flakes. We're gonna do some soy sauce. Now, keep in mind that hot oil is 
can make a lot of noise when you introduce liquid in there and that's totally fine. Soy sauce for flavor. We're gonna do this dark mushroom soy for color. We wanna pour that right onto the fish. All right. And then the main liquid we're using is this high alcohol content rice wine. So let's go ahead and add that. And then I'm gonna add some water, just to give it a medium by which to actually cook the fish all the way through. And then last but not least is the sugar that we added. We just wanna add a little bit for sweetness, not too much, okay? We can always add more. At this point, we're gonna turn that fire all the way up and we can use our scooper and begin to baste the fish. Okay, at this stage, what we're gonna do now, once all that liquid is this, uh, homogenized, it's been mixed together, we're gonna go ahead and keep basting it, and shortly we're gonna cover it and let that steam cook and boil and braise at the same time. All right, let's turn our heat down. and let's cover up that fish. Judging by the darkness of the liquid, it is pretty dark, and I want to try to cut some of that by adding water. All right, let's make sure that is gonna be simmering before I cover it up. Anytime you add water, it really reduces the temperature inside your pot, so you gotta bring up your heat to make sure it's boiling. All right, I think I've got enough heat. Let's go ahead and cover that. And let's turn the heat down just to a simmer. We're gonna let that cook until the fish becomes flaky. Now you don't wanna overcook your fish because it can fall apart on you. So we're gonna leave it covered, simmering, for only about three to four minutes before we come back and check it. Okay, it's been about three minutes and what we wanna do is go ahead and open that up and at this time, we wanna introduce our green onion and our garlic. And we're gonna let that cook and impart its flavors to the fish. At the same time, I want to begin basting my fish to make sure that uh, the top of the fish has all those flavors that I've introduced. You can also, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat all the way up. You can tilt the pan. Remember, the medium for carrying the heat is the liquid. Of course, the pan is hot itself too. But if you wanna make sure the head is cooked all the way through, bring the liquid uh, over by the head to make sure it's doing, it's cooking. And then the same thing with that tail. Make sure that liquid has a chance to fully cook that tail. Now this sauce is gonna continue to cook down, the water will evaporate, and it'll be a nice thick sauce when we're all finished. Let's get ready to plate it. Let's let that go covered for just a few more minutes and we'll be ready. Okay, 
We've had our fish going now for about eight minutes and let's go ahead and check the temperature. You wanna bring the internal temperature of your fish to at least 150, 160. Let's go and check this here. I've got that now at 159, 160 degrees. It should be just fine. And you can see that sauce has now really developed. So let's give it one last baste to make sure we got a good color. And let's go ahead and pull that out. The way we're gonna do this is we're gonna go underneath the head to make sure it releases and under the tail. All right, let's go ahead and support that. And let's put the whole thing now right onto our pan. There we go. And let's get this sauce over the fish. And before we serve it, let's do some cilantro right on top just to give it a splash of green. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you try this fish. I hope you enjoy it. Serve it with some rice. Get some of that gravy. It's really great. Thank you again.